Hi everyone! We're group 32 and today we'll be presenting our project which focuses on automation of composite layout for wind turbine blades. Before jumping right into technical details, here are some background information on why we chose this project and why it is important. Wind energy is one of the fastest growing renewable energy sectors as it is one of the cleanest and most sustainable ways of generating electricity. The wind energy consumption was determined to be the third highest consumed renewable energy after biofuels and hydropower. Wind energy has many benefits, but the most important ones are that it is highly efficient and reliable, and it can produce electricity in megawatt scale without using any fuels. Wind turbine blades play a huge role on capturing as much wind energy as possible while withstanding serious mechanical loads. Blades are commonly designed as long airfoils to maximize energy generation. Manufacturing process of these blades are very complex and time consuming. The most common method to manufacture blades is a technique referred as the hand layup, which consists of six steps. These steps are mold preparation, dry reinforcement laying, dosing and mixing raising system, impregnation and consolidation, curing, and finally demolding and finishing. The process is mostly manual and thus it is mainly conducted by humans. This creates some inaccuracies between blades and also slows down the man manufacturing process significantly. Composites are the major material source of blade manufacturing. These composites consist of fibers and ma matrix materials. E-glass fibers were the most common fibers used in blades until the development of S and S2 glass fibers. S-glass fibers provide higher strength compared to E-glass fibers, but they're more expensive. Another fiber alternative is carbon fibers, which possess much higher stiffness and lower density compared to glass fibers. Although carbon fiber is lighter and stiffer than glass fiber, they have relatively low damage tolerance, compressive strength, and ultimate strain. And they're also more expensive than the e-glass fibers. Moving on to the matrix. There are two major types of raisin matrix materials, thermosets and thermoplastics. Thermosets can cure at low temperatures and have lower viscosity, which allows infusion and high processing speeds. Polyester and epoxy raisins are examples for thermosets used in the blade manufacturing industry. On the other hand, thermoplastics can be recycled and their melting temperatures are low, lower than their decomposition temperatures, which enables them to be reshaped upon melting. If these two matrix materials were to be compared, it would be concluded that thermoplastics have higher fracture toughness than thermosets whereas thermosets have better fatigue behavior than thermoplastics. As it can be seen from the previous slides, the biggest problem with current manufacturing technologies is that they rely too much on human input. Due to this, multiple issues arise. Some of these issues are inaccuracies between blades, slow production speeds, and high material scrap scrapping rates. This, in turn, increases the overall cost, and also results in delays in deliveries. Additionally, the manual deposition of the fibers and matrix introduces significant errors as distribution is typically not homogeneous and excess material can significantly increase the weight of the product. There are some automated technologies used in different engineering fields, which are also taken into consideration for this project such as automated tape layup and automated fiber placement. However, these technologies are not suitable for glass fiber placement. Moreover, they're mainly used in industries where capital cost is not as big as an issue as accuracy. Therefore, none of the current methods are well suited for wind turbine blade manufacturing, as they have very high capital costs and could have inaccuracies like material creases and waves. So our team is proposing an automated solution that we'll be calling 
Automated Layup Process, in short, ALP. Shifting is a method which offers a layup process that manipulates fiberglass fabric without causing out-of-play waviness. The ALP solution our team is proposing incorporates some of the main concepts of this shifting method. ALP would be used to automate the manipulation and layup process of the fabric by integrating the shifting concept of preforming the fabric to approximate the shape of the mold. It would then enhance the shifting method by also automating the deposition of the fabric into the mold. In order to conduct this automated process, a combination of commercially available three-axis gantry system and a four-axis shifting bed would be required. The shifting head and the gantry system would work in coordinated motion to sequentially shift, deform, and deposit the fabric onto a test mold. It is very important that ALP allows the fiber to conform to the mold without any creases or waves. The strength and fatigue performance of the composite would be negatively effective if there are any creases or waves on the material. Currently, even though blade manufacturing is an intricate process, manual labor is being used in the industry. That's why our team is proposing ALP. For ALP, the user will first cut the fabric into desired size and then will lay down the dry fiberglass into the mold. After raisin matrix is applied onto the fabric with the appropriate fiber placement head of the gantry system, vacuum bag is applied in a way to cover the entire mold. As larger layups often take several hours to finish, the curing period of the composite needs to be long enough to accommodate successful completion of the entire deposition stage. Once the vacuum bag is applied onto the mold, the raisin matrix begins to saturate the fiberglass in a process that is commonly referred to as impregnation. Depending on the specific type of fiber and matrix chosen for the blade, the time required for curing could change. When the saturation is complete, the resulting blade material is very strong and lightweight, which is very crucial to successfully capturing as much wind energy as possible. The machine would create a shift in a cycle of coordinated motion. In each cycle, the machine feeds straight fabric from the fabric roll, shifts the fabric to a certain shape, deposits the shifted fabric onto the mold, and then prepares for the next cycle. Successive cycles of shifting would result in a piece of fabric with a curved shape. Technical analysis of the process shows that ALP significantly increases the layup speed and also reduced deviation between blades as it is shown in the table. This means that ALP would ensure that the blades would be ready in much less time and also higher quality products could generate more energy from the wind. Before wrapping up, there are some issues and areas of improvement we would like to talk about. The first issue with ALP is that due to the continuous deformation, the width of the fabric decreases gradually. Another issue is that sometimes shifting can create elastic deformation, which would spring back to its original shape, creating unprecedented inaccuracies in the fabric. One possible solution for this issue would be overshifting, in which the fabric is shifted at an angle larger than the originally intended one, leaving enough space for elastic deformations to revert back. This, if applied properly, would further reduce inaccuracies and make the process more repeatable. One final area of improvement would be incorporating a universal docking system similar to the system used in automated fiber placement process. This would allow multiple fiber placement heads to be utilized to accommodate different blade shapes and sizes. 
To sum up this presentation, the proposed solution will minimize the material scrap rates and production cycle times, increase the consistency between different blades, and decrease the costs associated with manufacturing and labor by shifting the fabric into approximate shape of the mold and then depositing onto it. However, further research refinements and practical testing are required to prove that LP is worth investing into. Thank you so much for listening.